Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much, Miko, for uh, organising this conference. And we're very happy uh, also to the rest of the Carlo Vissosa team um, to be here once again for the research and policy days and organising this together on behalf of FEPS. Uh, unfortunately, our Secretary General couldn't be with us this morning. Uh, we're actually organising a big seminar um, this week, uh, which we call Call to Europe. Um, on this year's theme is going to be on migration and asylum policy. Um, we're very happy um, for the topic of today's seminar. Every year, um, the Cali Vissosa, we always choose very good, um, very good themes for the debate, so um, I'm really looking forward to this. I'm just going to say a few words um, to introduce what we thought of this uh, topic. And basically, since the economic crisis, we're witnessing stagnating economies, rising inequalities and increasing divergence between the countries of the European Union. Rising unemployment has also been accompanied by a significant increase in social inequality in Europe and poverty. Now about one family in ten lives in poverty. Real wages fell in all EU countries, with the exception of Germany and Finland, apparently. The theme of today, technology and inequality, are linked by two apparent mechanisms. The first of these is the capital bias of recent technological change. Rapid automation displaces labour and, and delivers more and more of the returns on productivity directly to capital. Although technological progress has never failed to generate new employment opportunities in the past, it should also allow us to do more and make us better off. The question is what jobs will be lost for the short term and will our workforces be retrained at the same speed as these changes? The new president of the European Commission, Jean-Claude Juncker, proposed he will mobilise up to 300 billion euros in additional public and private investment in the real economy over the next three years. This includes new sustainable job-creating projects to be identified and promoted. To make, to make such projects happen, however, more effective financial instruments and a further increase in the European Investment Bank's capital must be considered. Much better use of this should be made in order to stimulate investment. <coughs> By mobilising instruments such as the European Investment Bank and better allocation of funds from the EU budget, such as structural funds, can enhance technological innovation. Research and development policies create perspectives of new jobs with new technologies. In this framework, small to medium-sized enterprises play an important role in many European economies in creating new possibilities of jobs and sustainable growth. Moreover, Mariana Matsukato in a paper for FEPS goes further. She believes that innovation comes from startups and smaller enterprises. Therefore, we should elaborate more on using risk capital instruments to facilitate the creation of more startups to enhance technological change. Creating jobs on a small scale gives opportunities for jobs in the future. Therefore, ensuing growth and job security and increasing aggregate demand at national and European levels. Oh, sorry. Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> Um, austerity policies are restrict, restricting scope for public investment. In order to counter this, more fiscal stimulus is needed to support technological innovation and, of course, to deliver inclusive growth and a fair distribution of wealth. Adaptation to past periods of progress was shaped by political and policy responses. Progressive politics will play a huge role in ensuring a fair distribution of wealth in the backdrop of technological, technological advances. Just to summarise my brief introductory remarks, there are four instruments um, key to enhancing technological innovation in a progressive manner. This is number one, mobilising more use of the European Investment Bank. Number two, better allocation of the EU budget, especially for structural funds. Number three, fiscal stimulus policies to, re to replace austerity. And finally, number four, facilitate the creation of more startups and support to small to medium sized enterprises. I look really forward to the, hearing from the speakers today and I believe that the discussions such as this can really help us avoid making mistakes of the past. Thank you very much. <laughs>